from the Word of God, and then I just want you to be able to have time to do business with the Lord this morning on that one thing. I want you to center out one thing in your life and say, Lord, this is my thing that I really need to trust you with this morning. Verse number five. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saves his anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Verse number seven. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. Y'all claim that this morning. And stand aright. 
Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the Lord this morning with a message entitled, I Will Trust You, Lord. Father God, we come to you right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that we have the ability to come before you and lay our petitions at your feet today. And Father, I pray over this congregation right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we are still new into a fresh year. Father, the old things can be passed away and the old things can become new according to your holy word. So Father, right now, if there be anything that is coming against your people, we claim right now in the mighty name of Jesus that we will trust you with it. We will turn it over to you. We will put it into your hands, which means taking it out of our hands. And Lord, we will make sure that we do not pick it up again because every time we handle it, it gets our fingerprints on it and ends up being a bigger mess than when we ever started. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we claim this word over our situation, over our troubles, over our concerns, over our one thing that you need to handle, Lord, in your will and in your timing. And we claim that in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First thing we want to talk about this morning is found in verse number 5. And I want you to kind of key in on this. We're going to take a few parts out of these verses this morning. And if it resonates with you, just don't be ashamed at all to just say praise God. Because here's what's going to happen already. I can feel it and I can sense it in my spirit. That, that you don't want anybody to know that you've got one thing that's bothering you in your life. Amen. Uh, well, we're, 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 we're real quick to tell people uh, uh, all about all kind of situations, but when we got that one thing that's going on in our lives, a lot of time we, we camouflage that, do we not? And so when God begins to speak and you begin to hear silence in the house, guess what silence is? It's actually a whole lot of quiet amens. <laughs> Amen. Hey, I've been standing here long enough to where I know I can read people's faces, I can read your eyes, and I can tell when you got that one thing can we just get it out of the way right now, right now, and just say we all got one thing? Amen. Praise God. You know what we just did? We just took the yoke away from the enemy. Now the enemy can't make us sit there like we're all nice and proper and we ain't got nothing wrong with us. Amen? But now look what the Word of God says in verse number 5. He says, we will rejoice in your salvation. You know what? When I, when I began to read this and prepare this message... God just made a few observations before we get to, get to the meat of it that I want to share with you this morning. Would you testify with me this morning that one of our problems as people of God is we spend so little time rejoicing and so much time complaining? Right. Amen? He said, I want you to just start with rejoicing in the fact that you're saved. Amen? Amen? Not only saved from a devil's eternal hell, you are saved from tomorrow. You are saved from the one thing that's going on in your life. If you would just grab hold of the fact that when you rejoice, devils flee. But when you complain, they all come to your party. Amen? Misery feeds misery. Praise runs it off. So he begins this message this morning telling all of us, spend more time telling the world, telling yourself what God is doing for you instead of so much time telling what the devil's doing to you. Oh, Lord, if we could get a hold of that this morning. Amen. Amen. We talk about it a lot of times we use cliches like out praising your problems, right? And out praying your problems. And those are pretty little flowers. We can make plaques out of them and we can make t-shirts out of them and we can use them over and over again. But the bottom line is just because you wear it doesn't mean you live it. And we got to out praise those situations that are going on in our life. He said, you know why he made up his mind? We will rejoice in the fact that that God has saved us from hell and he saved us from tomorrow and praise God he saved me from myself. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house this morning that you've been saved from your own self? That's right. That's right. 
If you don't believe me, just you just walk a mile in some people's shoes and listen to their testimony of how they were on a course of destruction that they set out themselves to pursue. Right. Amen? Right. Make decision after decision after decision knowing that destruction was the end of the line for them. And every single day they would wake up and make a new plan to go a little bit deeper and a little bit more depraved and injure themselves and the people around them just a little bit more every day until Jesus got a hold of them. Oh, we need to be shaking the bushes this morning. When Jesus got a hold of them, they got radically changed. And now all of a sudden they can testify every time anybody will listen to them. God not only saved me from hell, he saved me from me. That's right. That's right. And you don't have any problem getting a rejoicing out of those folks. Amen? Amen. But guess what? We're all those folks. Right. God has saved each and every one of us from our own self-destructing habits. Amen? Amen? And we need to rejoice this morning. He said, we will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God. How many of you will just give a glory shout out this morning for the name of Jesus? Amen. And the power that comes through the name of Jesus Christ. And I began to think about that a little bit this week. And I began to think about the names of Jesus throughout the word of God. Throughout the whole word of God. But particularly through the New Testament. And I love that when the Lord says, I am the light of the world. How many of you have ever walked in darkness? When you've walked in darkness, you know what the beauty of light is. Amen? When you haven't been able to see what's right in front of you because of the darkness that you've walked in, you begin to appreciate the light. And I'm thankful this morning that God says he shined the light into darkness and he brought me out of a destruction. Amen? He's the light of the world. I also love the fact that one of his names is he is the door. Amen? I, I love the fact, the fact that that in my life, and I know in some of y'all's life too, that y'all lived a life where it just seemed like you were constantly beating your head up against the wall. Amen? Can anybody give a shout out that you're glad you finally found the door? Amen. I didn't know what was on the other side. I just kept hitting the wall and hitting the wall and hitting the wall until Jesus said, you know you got a door. And when I walked through that door, and I saw the glorious truth that was on the other side. Guess what? I don't have to live in darkness anymore. How many of you know he says I am the great shepherd? He's the shepherd that leads us each and every day of our life. He is the resurrection and the life. How many of you know he calls himself the vine? Amen. That where I get my daily strength and my daily courage to get up and just move and have my being. I'm here to tell you, spend more time just speaking the name of Jesus. And I guarantee you that one thing that you have trouble trusting the Lord with won't be so demonic and so overpowering in your life. Is this speaking to anybody this morning? Amen. Right here this morning he says this. He says, I will, I will rejoice in the salvation of the Lord and in the name of the Lord. But now watch what he says here. He says, we will set up our banners. We will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now when I got back and started looking at that, here's the one thing that, that my research showed me. That when he says we will set up our banners in Caesar's day, they said that when, when wartime was about to break out, that it, they would put up these huge banners. And these banners, what they did, they proclaimed to the soldiers that it was time to go and take up their arms and prepare for battle. Amen? Here's one thing that's a problem in the church is the Holy Spirit began to speak to me when I was preparing this word. He says, that's the problem with my people is that when trouble comes and the battle is there to be fought, nobody wants to fight for their freedom anymore. They want to wallow. This is going to get. This is going to hurt. But this is the truth. Amen. We want to wallow in our self pity. We want to tell people about our problems. We want to say this is as good as it's ever going to get. I'm never going to get over this. That's what comes from our mouth. But the Lord says, I have placed a banner over you that says it's time for you to prepare for battle. Because I'm here to tell somebody this morning. That whatever your one thing is, it didn't come to play with you. 
It came to destroy you. Don't put it in the sandbox and think that you can spend time with it and the Lord. Amen? Oh, it's getting quiet in here now. I hear the amens coming in the spirit. The one thing our problem is, church, is simply this. We want it all. We want both in our lives. We want our one thing and we want Jesus. And Jesus says, I, God says, I'm a jealous God. I want you, and I want you to want me. And what have I said many times before? I'm going to proclaim it again this morning. Your heart is not a duplex. Amen. Both of them can't live there. One of them's got to go. So make up your mind this morning. Which one's going to go? I can tell you this morning, if you're a blood-bought believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not going anywhere. Amen. So those restless nights and those tumultuous times and all of those agonies that keep going on in your life, they're going to stay there. Why? Because the Lord's not going to leave you alone until that one thing is gone. Amen? So look at this this morning. He says, I want to fulfill all thy petitions. Can I ask you this morning? And I want you to just testify because look, I, I'm not here to just preach a message. I'm here to interact with God's people. Amen? Is there that one thing, how much time have you been spending in prayer on it? Anybody praying over your one thing? Well, I'm here to tell you right now, God is, is not only hearing those prayers, He's already made provisions for those prayers. But here, I, I think I, I, I did this on the morning moments not too long ago, but the problem is this. Whatever the answer is, we've already made up our mind what it should be. Amen? And until it's just like we've painted it in our mind, we see that God's not answering that prayer. But I come with a word this morning that's saying the prayer has already been answered. Amen. But you're looking for it in all the wrong places. you got to look for it through the Spirit. Because whoo, when you look for it through the Spirit, here's what you're going to find. It don't look like you painted it. It don't look like you wrote it up. Here's our problem, church. We write up our prayer request. Then we write at the bottom how God should answer it. Then we put right under it when he should answer it. And then we send it to him and we sit there and wait. I told you what I want, when I want it, and how I want it. Now hurry up. I can preach it because I know it. But here's what God is saying. I heard what you need. Not what you want, but I heard what you need. Now you're going to have to leave the rest up to me. So you can shorten that letter by just telling me what you want and leave the when and the how to me. But here's what I'm going to tell you. When I do it, I do it right. Amen. And when I do it, I do it forever. And when I do it, I do it in what's best for you and the people that are around you. So look for it, not the way you want it, but the way I'm sending it. Does that speak to anybody this morning? Yes. Have you ever had an answered prayer that God answered and you said, I never saw it coming that way? Amen. I've seen some situations come in my life where if, if it were up to me, I would, have made, I would have been confident in speaking the fact that's from the devil. Only to turn around and see that God used that to answer a prayer. So he hears all our petitions. Now look at verse number 6. He said, Now know I that the Lord saves his anointed. I want you to get that first part this morning because I believe if you're ever going to trust God, there's some certain things you've got to know about God. Amen? And I believe one other, another one of our hindrances, if I could just speak boldly and plain this morning, because I've lived it in my life, and I hadn't arrived yet, and I'm not nearly as far along in the Word of God as I want to be, but I can tell you right now for a fact that there was a time in my life that I had a very hard time trusting God simply because I didn't know what God said about trusting. you got to know what God says in order to hold Him to it. How many of you think it's wrong to hold God to His promises? It's not. 
If you're ever going to let go of that one thing, this is what you got to do. This is where you got to get. I could end it up right here, but this is where you got to get. You got to get to the place that says, all right, Lord, according to your word, you said that you can take care of this. So here it is. And walk away from it. And let God handle it. Amen? When we do that, that's the ultimate trust. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. Listen, there's some things I've been praying for for over four years that hadn't come to pass yet. But God finally told me if it's ever going to happen, you're going to have to back up. <laughs> Amen? You're going to have to back up. And let me work on everything that's going on in that prayer request. And I will bring it to pass. Amen. And I sit on my heel every day. And I pray for that one thing to come up my driveway. One thing. And I trust him. I don't understand him. I don't know what's taking so long. But I trust him. He said, Ed, just back up and let me work. Amen? Amen? Can you give him your one thing? If it takes one year, 10 years, or 20 years, it's got to be in his timing if it's ever going to be right. Some may trust in chariots. Those chariots were loud and they were noisy and they would have blades on the side so that during war when they went through camps that not only the chariot would, would take out folks but the blades that were on the side would injure folks all the way through. I'm here to tell you this morning, some trust in man-made mechanical situations to just mow down the problem and take it out but that's not what God wants. He wants you to work through it. Not just take it out. Can you, you don't have to raise your hand this morning, but I know it's true because we're all made of the same flesh. There's been times in your life when you've prayed that the Lord just remove people from your life. Amen? I'm not going to say you prayed, take them out. <laughs> I'm not going to say you hadn't either. Only to see those people one day come to Christ. And you say, Lord, I'm glad you didn't listen to me. Because I trusted in chariots. And he says, some trust in horses. Do you know the horses of those days, the horses of war, were trained to not only guide those chariots through camp, but when they would go through camp and they would pull them up a certain way, those horses were trained to trample and to gnaw at people. In other words, they were a weapon that was trained to take out the enemy. Some trust in that whole process of eliminating our situation by human means. But guess what he says? We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Can anybody in the house this morning remember when God's answered a prayer for you before? Amen? Can you remember it was because you finally trusted Him with it? Amen? Not after you've trusted everything else, but before you trust everything else. I've said this, I know, before too, but I'm going to say it again. That I've seen signs on churches that say, when everything else fails, pray. I like to say pray because everything else fails. This morning, here's what you got to do. Here's what all of us have got to do. As for me, I will trust you, Lord, because you said in your word, let's hold him to it this morning. Y'all want to? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When the word of God speaks that, he also speaks. If any man, if any person be in Christ, all things are passed away and all things become new. Lord, you said in your word, behold, I make all things new. Amen? And he says something else that I want to leave you with this morning. God himself said, 
Is there anything too hard for me? That's what God said. Is there anything too hard for God? But yet we hold on to our one thing. Because God says in Luke 137, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So this morning, take your one thing, put it in the palm of your hand as we sing, and lift that up to Jesus. And say, Lord, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how long my heart's going to have to break. But I know this. When it comes to pass, if it comes to pass, no, when it comes to pass, it'll have to come through you. Would y'all testify to that this morning? If it's going to ever be right, it's going to have to go through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's stand.